thought I'd do some uh, quick modeling on uh, weld mitts. And I'm just going to start with a uh, new, new part template. And instead of starting on a regular plane, I'm going to go ahead and start with just a 3D sketch. And we'll play with a 3D sketch for a little bit. Um, 3D sketches are pretty simple. You can just start with rectangles, circles, things like that. And you got to look at where the little red uh, user coordinate system is. Uh, if you hit the tab key, it'll actually flip. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the little corner there, and you'll see when I hit the little tab key, you can see it actually flip to a different plane. So right now it's on the uh, XZ plane. I'll just go ahead and use that and just drop a rectangle out there. And then we'll go into our dimensions, and we'll make this guy 30 by 40. Go ahead and zoom to extents. And then now I need to, uh, I'm going to make a table, and this is the top of the table. I need to make some legs coming down. So I'm just going to again grab the rectangle command. Start at the origin and hit the tab key, flip it, and I'm going to go ahead and let the legs kind of hang out the edge just for a bit, and I'll show you kind of why. So I've got two of those, and then I'm going to just connect them up with the line command. So connect them all up. Then I want to make sure that some of these lines, so I'm going to pick on this line, is actually along an X. When you create a rectangle, it uses the perpendicular and parallel relationships, but it doesn't actually lock it into uh, certain angles and stuff. So Making this along the Z and along the X, uh, that pretty much you know fully defines that rectangle on top view. All right. So next, all I got to do is I'm going to delete the extra little lines here. We'll just drag the endpoints of our legs, combine them up. And that kind of locks in where those points are. And then the last thing is I want this to be along the Z. So that way, whenever I drag one of these, it's going to drag all three. So all the legs have the same height. And just kind of make sure that I I don't screw anything up. Uh, next, we'll select all three of the, the bottom edges and make those for construction. They're not going to be part of my, my table leg. And then we just need to dimension whatever my, my table height is. So we'll just make it 24 inches. So that looks like a good little table. And I want to add a little bit more support. Now the problem is if I just draw a rectangle, hit the little tab key and just draw it out here somewhere, there's no telling exactly where that thing's going to be and where it's going to live. So Something I like to do is to actually create planes inside of the 3D sketch. And uh, I like to pre-select. So I'm going to pre-select these two lines. We'll just hit the little plane command. And you'll see that those are my two reference lines. We'll hit OK. And now I've actually got a plane that I can start sketching on. So anytime I draw something now, I know that for, for a fact it's going to be on, on that plane. So I'm going to add a, a little rectangle here. And I'm not going to worry about dimensioning it or anything like that. I know exactly where it's at. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some weldments. So we'll finish out of the sketch. We'll go to the weldments tab. And straight out of the box, this is a new install, you'll notice that we do have uh, two standards, but we don't have a whole lot of types and we don't have a lot of sizes. So in order to get some more sizes, let me close out of that, we're going to go here. And uh, they change a little bit online. So uh, SolarWorks doesn't ship them direct. You have to actually go download them. So underneath the uh, SOLIDWORKS content on the Design Library tab there, uh, go under Weldments and you'll see the different si or the different types of styles here. And all you have to do is hold Control and click and then you tell it where you want to save it. So I'm going to save this out to my desktop and it'll take a little while to uh, download. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back when it's done. Alright, now that that's done, let's take a look at where we actually need to put it. So if I get our Tools, Options, and we go look at our file locations. I'm going to go look under, scroll to the very bottom, under Weldment Profiles. So under Weldment Profiles, you'll see exactly where that location is supposed to be. So if we go browse to it, and I'll kind of show you what I'm going to do. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is underneath this language folder right here, there's an English directory, and this is where it actually houses quite a bit of the different uh, a bill of material properties and styles and things like that. So uh, I'm actually going to drag this over to my little favorites and so that way I can quickly and easily uh, select it and it'll take me to that location. And here you'll see your Weldments profiles. So those are the two directories that I have right now. So I'm just going to minimize this and we'll OK out of there. And if I go look on my desktop, you'll see that I've got a uh, two zip files. I went ahead and downloaded the Unistrut as well just so you can kind of see the, the way this works. And we'll go ahead and extract the uh, ANSI inch. I'll just extract it to the desktop there. There 
we go. And I'll also do the unit strut. This one won't take nearly as long. There we go. And uh, do be a little bit careful because notice that there's an ANSI inch directory here. And then inside the ANSI inch directory, there's another ANSI inch directory. Okay. And then this is where the actual, uh, all the different members and stuff will start up. So uh, make sure that you're inside the first directory. And then this is where I'm actually going to copy. And then we'll go grab our weldment profile. And I'm going to paste it inside here. Now there's already an existing ANSI inch, so I'm just going to go ahead and merge these together. All right. And then uh, the Unistrut. So kind of check out the directory structure right under Unistrut. This is where the members start here. And underneath the members, all it is is a bunch of uh, sketches. Uh, SolidWorks library feature parts. So uh, get up to, notice it's Unistrut and then Unistrut. So I'm grabbing the second directory. I'll copy that and paste it in there. So this gives me an extra uh, standard there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Go ahead and pull up our SolidWorks again. And let's go look at our weldments now under structural members. Under the standards, notice now I have my Unistrut. The Unistrut next underneath that is the different folders. And then under the folders are the different sizes, which are the uh, SolidWorks library feature part files. Now I'm just going to use some regular uh, standard square tubing. So I'm going to go under ANSI inch uh, rectangle tube square there. And we'll get a small size, two and a half quarter and then I'm just going to select on the little lines I can tell it where to uh, uh, be aligned on the uh, the sketch if I scroll down to the very bottom there's a locate profile it'll automatically zoom you in and then wherever I want the profile swept at say for instance this bottom left hand corner you can select that and now you'll notice that the rectangle or the square tubing is all on the inside and at the very top of that, that table now if I wanted the actual enclosure of the table to be on the inside, uh, it's very simple. Just hit Locate Profile and we'll select on that top left corner there. There you go. So now everything's kind of inside my box. Now uh, when I do this, you'll see that these different little uh, uh, corners have a specific uh, treatment. So over here on the left, you can select on which sides you want. And if you want individual ones, say for instance I want two longs and two shorts, I can click on them and I can actually change them to something different. So you can kind of see I've got a little bit longer one here. And let's go ahead and switch this guy. So I've got a longer one here. So that way I've got two that are the same and then two that are the same on this side as well. Uh, the only thing to kind of watch out for is when you're doing a miter, there's a, a new feature in 2012 that popped up to merge the miter trim bodies. This is in case some people cut the, the actual mitered uh, edge here and they don't actually cut all the way through it. So they're using one huge piece of tubing, they'll cut it a couple times and then they'll just bend it. And uh, that way you just get one single piece of material there. Uh, so just make sure that if you're doing miter trim bodies, a lot of times you're not gonna want that option on. I'm gonna go back to uh, my regular uh, setting there. And since I changed it, I gotta redo these guys. Now if I'm wanting the same type of uh, rectangular tube there, then I'll, I'll go ahead and keep it in the same structural member, but I have to create a new group. So I just select on that, go down and locate the profile. And there it is. Do another new group. I have to do one for each of the individual little legs uh, because they're going to be aligned uh, a little bit differently. Each, each new group is going to be aligned separate than the other one. So one more. go and that looks pretty good so we'll go ahead and just say okay and you'll see some of the uh, parts are actually going through other parts so we have some nice little tools up there to take care of that we'll do trim and extend and the bodies to be trimmed are going to be all the four legs and we'll just trim them off on a uh, face there and take a look at these little tabs on whether it's going to discard or keep uh, the certain little uh, bodies out there so all you have to do is if you do want to keep something, you just click it and it changes from a keep, you know, it's a toggle on and off from a discard to a keep. So most of the time it gets it, it right, but a lot of times uh, you may have to just double check to make sure it's, it's doing what it should. 
So that looks pretty good. Next, I wanted to put some uh, angle iron in here. So let's go to structural members. Uh, ANSI inch is good. We'll do some L angle. Uh, again, we'll get some kind of small stuff. Uh, let's do some one by one. And I'm going to go ahead and pick all four of these. And this one, I just need them to rotate. So we do have an option down here. Let's scroll down. And I'll try 90 degrees. And that's not what I want. So let's do 270. There we go. And the good thing is, you know, the preview is what you see is what you get. Um, I am going to change up a little bit about how some of these are trimmed off. So I'm going to flip some of these. There we go. Because I actually, I'm going to extend these all the way to the, uh, the end over there. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And I'll do trim and extend. Now this is kind of a nice little feature is when I do trim and extend, I can not only select one face. So notice it, it didn't hit the face, so it's got to extend all the way out to it. But I can also select a secondary face. It's actually going to extend all the way out to both faces. So we'll go ahead and say OK. And all that's done with that little rectangle. So I can always go back into my 3D sketch, make the necessary changes, or add my dimensions, and everything's going to update and, and work correctly. Alright, so my table looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and just go to a little isometric view. And I'm going to turn off some of my planes. Now, be careful because the 3D sketch planes, you don't turn them off like a regular plane. It's actually a 3D sketch plane. So you can turn the visibility off there. I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility of the sketch off there. And now I just want to create a simple little drawing. But before I do the drawing, I have to uh, make sure that my cuts list is active and up to date. Uh, let's go ahead and add uh, some quick little end caps first. All I got to do is select on these little pads there. Uh, if you want to chamfer the corners, you can. And we can do these all at one pass. I can select on other little faces. And we'll cap these off pretty quickly. There we go. So I got some nice little solids. And what's happening is SolidWorks in the background is actually keeping these all as individual solids. Uh, there's a little green symbol up here, meaning that the cuts list needs to automatically update. Uh, but you do have to right click and tell it to update. So when I update, then what it does is it takes each of those different little members and puts them in their own little cuts list items. So notice that these two guys are cuts list items, these two. So anything that is the same length and the same uh, structural member, uh, it puts it in the individual cuts list items. So each of these have different properties and we'll kind of go through those a little bit later. And this is the properties that are going to automatically be filled out uh, when we're uh, doing our cuts list. So if we create our drawing, let's go ahead and save the part. So save that as weldment. And we'll go ahead and start up a new drawing. Just use a default template. And I'll use a B-size landscape. And I'll just use the current view, drag and drop it out there, make it shaded, scale it a little bit. Uh, let's use custom scaling. A little better, and let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the uh, the bill of material and the parts list, or the cuts cuts list. So when I go to document this on the annotation tab, uh, normally you'll just do a weldments cuts list, select the view, and I'll just use the default and plop it out there. So this is a good little breakdown. You can auto balloon that, and if you need to move the balloons, you can. You can change them where you want. And uh, it breaks it down to, of course, the different size and the different length. Now, if you want an overall list, then what you can do is you can actually use the bill of material table. So if I use the bill of material, select on that. And the only tricky thing is uncheck the detailed cuts list there. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. We'll put it in there. And then you'll notice that there's actually an item number one there. And then, of course, the description is the same for each of these but then it gives you the total amount of quantity for each of those different uh, pieces. So there's 216 of the uh, two and a half by two and a half by quarter inch uh, square tubing. And of course the uh, the weldment, I'm just going to go ahead and hide uh, that row. And you'll notice that the description is not filled out for uh, the end caps. So if we go back over to the, the uh, part file, we'll right click on the item, go to properties, We'll hit the little property name drop down and I'll get description. And we'll just add these are two and a quarter by two and a quarter by 
zero point two five M caps. And of course, since I filled it out there, go ahead and just rebuild and save. Go back to our drawing. And now I've got my description for my end caps all filled out. So you'll notice uh, one other little tricky thing is since I put the bill of material in last, uh, all of these were listed as item number one, and they're sub items actually underneath there. So each different view can be linked to a different bill of material, or in this case, a weldment's cuts list. So if you select on the view, right click and go to properties, uh, we can go down under the balloons and we can tell it what they're actually linked to. Since the last one I put in was the bill of material, it's going to be listed as a bill of material. But I really want those to the uh, weldment's cuts list there because everything right now is listed as ones. So we'll say OK. Now everything's listed right like it was. And I kind of have the best of both worlds as, you know, the individual uh, weldments cuts or the overall, you know, purchasing uh, rec here for, for the different uh, tube lengths and properties and things. So I hope you got some good information out of that. Uh, we started out with a 3D sketch, you know, making the little table. Did a couple trim and extends. Uh, went into the actual properties of the part or the solids to uh, give them the correct properties and made a simple little drawing with a weldment's cuts list and a uh, bill of material for the overall lengths. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks.